Most times, corporate marketing is boring as fuck, excuse my language, but sometimes it hits different. Corporate marketing is a type of marketing that promotes a company as a whole as opposed to an individual product. Ultimately, the main goal of corporate marketing is to improve your brand image while strengthening relationships with your customers so they can become brand advocates. When corporate marketing is working correctly, it should keep the flywheel spinning by attracting new customers while engaging leads and delighting current customers. For most companies, corporate marketing is performed through some boring kind of strategy or tactic like writing a blog, press releases, maybe posting some beige ass shit on social media, or regular investor reports if the company is a public traded entity. What about the companies that do corporate marketing differently? That's what I want to highlight in this piece of content. And I collected 10 examples that I think will be insightful, entertaining, and hopefully inspiring to all the corporate marketers. The first corporate marketing that I want to highlight is Macy's Day Parade. How many of you woke up on Thanksgiving Day as a child excited to see those huge balloons on television? Now, how many of you still do that today? I'm going to guess probably a lot of you because I still do. Um, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is the world's largest parade. It started in 1924 and has been nationally televised on NBC since 1953. The famous balloons were added in 1928, replacing live zoo animals. And the large animal-shaped balloons were produced by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company through 1980. More on that company next. Up until the pandemic, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade would bring in three to four million attendees that watched it live through that two and a half mile route from the Upper West Side and ending outside Macy's Herald Square flagship store. More than 44 million people typically watch the parade on television on an annual basis. And in 2020, the first ever live international broadcast of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade occurred in the Philippines. The second corporate marketing that hits differently is the Goodyear blimp. Growing up in Northeast Ohio, I remember getting excited every time I would randomly get to catch a glimpse of the Goodyear blimp. In 1916, the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company began building Zeppelin aircrafts for the United States military during World War I. Upon World War I's conclusion, Goodyear continued to manufacture the Zeppelins, but they were used mostly for advertising of its products. The maiden voyage of the first Goodyear blimp, which was known as the Pilgrim, was in 1924. Beginning in the 1950s, Goodyear's airships commonly appeared at major sporting events. It was once said that imagining football without the Goodyear blimp would be kind of sad. It has become a part of our national consciousness. And in January 2019, the College Football Hall of Fame inducted the Goodyear Blimp in as its first ever non-human inductee. Now, kind of another tire company talking about the Michelin Guide is kind of the third corporate marketing initiative that I want to talk about. It seems these tire companies in the early 1900s must have had some pretty special marketers because the French tire company Michelin also had an epic corporate marketing strategy. In 1900, there were only about 3,000 cars on the road in France. So to increase the demand for cars and accordingly car tires, car tire manufacturer Michelin published a guide for French motorists called the Michelin Guide. It provided information to motorists such as maps, tire repair and replacement instructions, listing of car mechanics, hotels, and gas stations throughout France. In the early 1920s, they also made several kind of changes to the Michelin Guide, notably listing restaurants by specific categories and removing advertisements in the guide. Recognizing the growing popularity of the restaurant section of the guide, Michelin recruited a team of inspectors to visit and review restaurants who were always anonymous. This is the core of the Michelin Guide today that awards up to three Michelin stars for excellence to a select few establishments. The fourth corporate marketing initiative that I want to kind of talk about is just kind of bucketing all of these like corporate experiential events that are being thrown now. Almost every company 
pretty much throws some type of these annual events, but few have reached any level of cultural significance. A few that kind of come to mind that did reach cultural significance is Tesla's Battery Day or its GigaFest. You also have Salesforce, Dreamforce, Berkshire Hathaway's annual meeting, also Apple's special events, and its Worldwide Developers Conference. These corporate experiential events have become the stuff of legend. They aren't just for product launches, but command the attention of the global audience and define entire industries. The impact of a well-produced, story-driven event reinforcing the trajectory of a business is truly limitless. Now, I want to talk about a company that does corporate marketing extremely well, and that's Red Bull. Is Red Bull a beverage brand with a great media strategy or a media company that just so happens to be the category creator of the packaged energy drinks? I kind of think about that quite often. I could have listed a handful of the different Red Bull corporate marketing events, but I went with the Flute Hog because I think it's the single greatest representation of it. The famous marketing tagline of Red Bull is, it gives you wings. And the Flute Hog is German for flight day and is an event that was first held in 1992 in Vienna, Austria. It was such a success that it has been held every year since and now in over 35 cities all over the world. Anyone is eligible to compete in the Flutog events to participate. Each team must apply and their contraption must meet the size and weight criteria set forth by Red Bull each year. Competitors attempt to fly homemade human-powered flying machines that are usually launched off a pier of like 30 foot high into a body of water. Most competitors enter for the entertainment value and the flying machines rarely fly at all. The largest known attendance of these Flutog events was the 2012 event in Cape Town, South Africa, where it had 220,000 attendees. But these events are also watched by millions on YouTube and streamed on devices like Apple TV. Another corporate marketing initiative that I want to talk about is the Guinness World Records. The Michelin Guide was created to sell more tires, and the Guinness Book of World Records was created to sell more beer. In November 1951, the managing director of Guinness Breweries got into an argument about the fastest game bird that was in Europe. He realized that there must be numerous other questions debated nightly at pubs across the world, which... There was no book that could settle these arguments about these records. So the first book was given out in 1954 and then was officially updated and sold in 1955. Today, the Guinness World Records is a global brand and the 2022 edition is now published in 100 countries in 23 languages and maintains over 53,000 records in its database. Kind of another grouping of corporate marketing events is these sales holidays. And these can kind of be seen on two different levels. The first one is with corporations kind of creating sales holidays that are not directly branded. So you can think about things like National Pancake Day that came from IHOP. They could have called it IHOP Day, but they didn't. Small Business Saturday is actually a product of American Express. National Friendship Day is from Hallmark to sell more cards. And then the second is with corporations creating these massive cultural sales events that are directly branded. The two most famous ones would be Amazon Prime Day and Alibaba Singles Day. Amazon Prime Day came to life in July of 2015 as a way to celebrate Prime members on Amazon's 20th birthday. In its seventh year, Amazon sales on Prime Day hit $11.2 billion globally. Alibaba's single day and singles day and kind of bachelor's day is held annually on November 11th, 11-11, kind of singles as you get that. Uh, The event is not an officially recognized public holiday in China, although it has become the largest offline and online shopping day in the world. In 2021, Alibaba reached a new singles day record of $85.5 billion in gross merchandising value. Another great corporate marketing strategy was IBM's Deep Blue. Deep Blue, or which was originally known as Deep Thought, was a chess-playing supercomputer that was developed by IBM. And the development of that Deep Blue product began in 1985. Now, by 1997, it became the first computer to actually win a chess game and a chess match against a reigning world champion under regular time controls. The match received massive media coverage around the world, and it was the classic plot between man versus machine. 
Behind the contest, however, was important to computer science, pushing forward the ability of computers and is considered a milestone in the history of artificial intelligence. The Deep Blue project inspired a more recent grand challenge by IBM, building a computer that could beat the champions at a more complicated game like Jeopardy. And in November of 2011, Watson, which was what it's known as today, took on two of the all-time most successful human players of the Jeopardy game and beat both of them in front of millions of televised viewers. The technology in Watson demonstrated that a whole new generation of human-machine interactions will be possible. Another corporate marketing kind of initiative or strategy that I wanted to bring up was the Gatorade coolers. Now, everybody kind of knows the origin story of Gatorade, especially if you watch a lot of sports because there has been a commercial by Gatorade for years that have explained it. But what about the sports celebration dumping of a cooler full of the sports drink on the winning coach? The first known instance of this Gatorade victory shower was when New York Giants player Jim Burt dumped a cooler of Gatorade over the coach Bill Parcells in a 1984 game against the Redskins. This dousing would become something of a tradition for every win by the Giants. Just so happened in the 1986 season, Parcells was doused 17 times. That really thrust the practice into the national spotlight thanks to the final dumping after the Giants' Super Bowl victory, ultimately seeing the Gatorade shower gain widespread adoption. Now you can make a prop bet each Super Bowl on which color of Gatorade will be dumped on the winning NFL team coach. Then the final corporate marketing strategy that I wanted to bring up was the El Arojo sign. Now I know a lot of these mentions of corporate marketing have been done differently have been coming from like large companies, or at least they are currently large companies. And I wanted to provide some inspiration from a local small business. Since 1975, El Arojo has enticed Tex-Mex lovers with its gargantuan portions and ice cold margaritas. But more recently, for another reason, if you've lived in Austin, maybe visited the city, or just like social media meme accounts, you likely have seen the El Arojo sign. You might even follow its Instagram page that boasts more than 500,000 followers. Current owners say the sign tradition keeps people connected with the restaurant and they know many people drive by there every day just to see what it says. While the tone of the sign's humor and sarcasm is remarkably consistent, its content is not the product of one person, but rather a group of about 15 people, including the owners and managers who collaborate on ideas over emails. And I just want to end this content on some final thoughts by giving Mondelez International a corporate marketing idea. So if those weren't enough, how about one idea that isn't a reality yet, but should be after Giannis Antetokounmpo recently broke down his first Oreo dunking experience. It's hilarious. Check out the video if you get a chance. So the Oreo NBA dunk contest seems so obvious now, right? If you enjoyed this YouTube video, hit that like button to support me. Also help me get to my short-term goal of 2000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button. Almost 70% of you that are watching this right now, yes, you are not subscribed, which really makes me sad. But thank you again for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one.